Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to talk about instantaneous acceleration, uh, which is going to almost exactly sound like a broken record because it'll be very, very similar to what we talked about before with instantaneous velocity. So here we're going to apply the same concepts to acceleration. So to move along here, I guess I should say to, to, to motivate ourselves, if you remember back when we talked about velocity, instantaneous velocity, we said that it was the slope of the line tangent to the position curve. So if you have a plot of position versus time, to find the velocity at any point instantaneously on that curve, you just draw a line tangent that barely touches that curve only in one point. And whatever the slope of that tangent line is, that's what we call the velocity. That's the instantaneous velocity. So I'm going to remind you of that again. So we're going to talk about uh, the position curve. Curve. And when I say position curve, what I'm talking about is position versus time. So what we're going to have here is, let's draw it kind of big so we have enough room. We have time and seconds. And we've done this before, but I'm using it as motivation because the acceleration is going to be a very similar argument. For a position curve, it could be anything. It could be going up and then like a wavy line and come back down, whatever. It's, it's literally a plot of how far away you are from the origin in the single direction we call x as a function of time. All right, so what we have here in this case, just for demonstration purposes, let's say that our position curve looks like this. Kind of a parabola that's only half of a parabola and it kind of goes up. So it's obviously not constant. And if we want to know the velocity here versus the velocity here versus the velocity down here, we basically said before that when we want to figure out what the velocity is at this point in time, what we do is we draw a line tangent to this curve, which means it just kisses the curve in one point, and the slope of that line equals the velocity. So the slope here is less than the slope here, so the velocity down here is less than the velocity up here. That's all we said. And then to put it into math terms, what we basically said is, hey, we want to find the instantaneous velocity at point A, which corresponds to some value of time. It doesn't really matter what it is. So what we're going to do to actually define that is we're going to pick some point B. We're going to pick some point B far away from A. And point B is some point on the curve at some position here in time. So this is time one, this is time two. So the interval of time here, we call it delta t. It's just how long between a and b exist in time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to figure out, we want to figure out what the velocity is here. So we'll take an estimate. We'll estimate it. And the way we'll estimate it is we'll say, well, we'll find the slope of this little line segment. I tried to draw it straight. I apologize it's not straight. The line segment between a and b. How do we find the slope of that line segment? Well, we're going to figure out what is the value here in position at A, and then we're going to find the corresponding value of position of B, and the difference between those guys is basically how far the thing moved. We call it delta x. And then we said, back when we talked about this, is that what we do is we say that the instantaneous, I'm not going to write out instantaneous over and over again, the instantaneous velocity was equal to the following thing. See, we don't put average anymore. We say the velocity is equal to what we call the limit of delta t, whoops, got to put a t there, delta t approaching 0, we'll talk about that in a second, delta x over delta t. So we already talked about all this stuff. And what you do is you, you don't worry about the limit part right now. You say, well, I want to do an estimate of the velocity at a. So I'll pick a velocity at b, and I'll find the slope of this line. How do I find the slope of this line? It's going to be rise over run. The rise is how far I go up, delta x. The run is how far I go over, delta t. So I'll find the slope of this line. Pretty good estimate. <clears throat> but then what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut delta t in half, and I'll pick a new point down here. And I'll find the slope of this line segment. That's a better estimate. And I'll keep doing it again and again, moving point b close, 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 eventually shrinking delta t down so low that it gets very close to 0, but not quite there. When I get that close, that tiny little line segment that I can't even draw will be delta x over delta t there in the limit that is going to be equal to the slope of the line tangent to this curve. That's what we call the velocity. Why did I spend six or seven or eight minutes going over something that you already know? It's because it's a direct mirror when we look at the velocity curve. So I'm going to do the exact same sort of argument. Here is a curve, but it's not position, it's velocity. So this is going to be meters per second, but it's still versus time. We always plot things versus time, because in the real world, everything changes with time. Now, this argument here was completely separate from what I'm drawing over here. I'm going to draw a completely new velocity curve. 
Uh, but the easiest one to draw on is one that looks like this. So I'm just going to use this one again, but I want you to know that this velocity curve doesn't have anything to do with this position curve. I'm just saying, if you had a velocity curve that looks like this, we can figure out what the acceleration on this curve is by the following thing. Let's say we want to figure out what is the acceleration at point A. Well, in a similar analogous thing, what we want to do is find the slope of the line tangent to A. So what we do in calculus, really, is what you learn, is you pick a point B far away, and then you say, well, I'm going to find, as an estimate, the slope of the line tangent here, uh, or not the line tangent, the line connecting A and B. And we know how to find those kinds of slopes. That's pretty simple, because this is going to be time, sub, time 1, T sub 1. This will be time T sub 2. Together, we call them delta T, or we subtract them, we call them delta T. And then to find over here, this value correspond to some, some velocity meters per second. So maybe I'm going 10 meters per second. Later on, maybe I'm going like 15 meters per second. And the difference here, we call it delta V, delta V. So what we say, here's the punchline, is that the instantaneous acceleration anywhere on a velocity curve or anywhere in time, we don't put average under it, we just call it A now, it's going to be equal to the limit of delta t approaching 0 of what do you think? It's going to be delta v delta t. Because remember, and that's what I want you to remember for this lesson, because remember the average acceleration, this does not look very clean, so let me write that better, delta v over delta t. Because remember, the, the uh, average acceleration, what is it? The average acceleration is this delta v divided by delta t. So what we have here is we take point B far away. We want to find out what is, the, what is an estimate for the instantaneous acceleration. Well, what we do is we find the average acceleration over this window. Delta V over delta T. That's what we do. It's the slope of this line segment, rise over run. That's what the slope of a line is, rise over run. So then we take it here and we say, well, that's a pretty good estimate. That is a good estimate for the average velocity, I'm sorry, the average acceleration between here and here. But let's move this point closer and find a different line segment. That will be the average acceleration between these two points. Then we move it closer and do the same thing again. Closer, 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 shrinking delta t in the process. Eventually, we get delta t so incredibly infinitesimally close to zero that there's an invisible tiny little line segment that you can't even see between a and the new value of b that I move very close. And the slope of that tiny, tiny line segment will be, in the limit, the slope of the line tangent to this point, which was what we call the acceleration. So I could have just written this on the board. That's what most books do. They'll just say, hey, here's, here's acceleration. It's a limit and all this stuff. And you don't know what that means. And you usually just kind of toss it aside. But it's very logical. And this is how calculus was, was invented. And this is what calculus is. Position curves, the limits. As we take this little interval down low, we find the slope of the line tangent. We call that the velocity. If we have velocity curves, velocity as a function of time, then we take the limiting process and find the slope of the little lines between on the velocity curve. And that's going to give us meters per second, per second. So the units work out. Meters per second per second is meters per second squared. We do that limiting process, and then that we, we say that, hey, that's going to be the acceleration at a specific point. Now, if you're in a calculus class, or if you're taking a, a more advanced physics, physics class, then you'll recognize this as the definition of something we call the derivative in calculus. I mean, you've been learning calculus the whole time. I just never really told you that. When you take this limiting process, it's what we call a derivative. That thing covers about half of your Calculus 1 class. So if you've never seen it before, you just learn the basics of Calculus 1. And if you're already in Calculus now, then it should look really, really familiar to you. All right. Um, what do I want to do next? Let's go on and, yeah, let's do one more thing before we close it out. So these are the same kind of thing, the exact same process. Now let's say, hypothetically, if you had a problem, I guess you could kind of call this a little mini problem if you wanted to. Let's say I have some, some velocity versus time graph. We'll call it velocity in meters per second. And instead of drawing the, the simple one that I drew there, we'll draw one a little more complicated. Let's say it goes up like this, and then it goes down, and then it kind of does something like this. So this could be very practical. Remember, this is one dimensional motion. You only can go along x and then back again and so on. So when you see it go up and down, it means you leave the origin, the front door of your house or something, and I go 4 meters per second, 5 meters per second. Way at the top, I'm going the fastest. I'm going like 10 meters per second or whatever. 
And then I start coming down, which means I start slowing down again from 10 meters per second, maybe six meters per second, four meters per second or whatever. And as time goes on, I get closer and closer and closer to stopping, meaning closer and closer to zero velocity. So here I'm speeding up, I turn around, and then, or I didn't even have to turn around really. I, start, I go there and then I start slowing down to a velocity close to zero. That's what's happening here. So let's go and label a few points on this graph. Let's take a look at some point called um, A. Let's take a look at some point called B. We'll take a look at some point called C. And we'll take a look at some point called D. So what I want to ask you is, um, at A, B, C, and D, what is the sign of the acceleration? Is it positive or is it negative acceleration? And also just get a feel for what's bigger, like what, which parts of this curve is going to have the largest acceleration. The key to it is to know intuitively that acceleration is the slope of the velocity curve. In other words, the slope of the line tangent to that curve, just like velocity is the slope of the position curve. So all you have to do when you're given a velocity curve is to figure out which parts are steepest and what the direction of the slope is to figure out what the acceleration is. So if we wanted to, for instance, go look at point A right here, then all we have to do is we have to imagine drawing a line tangent to this curve that goes to this point, just kissing the curve right at A. And we say that is a positive slope because remember, positive slopes go up and to the right but negative slopes go up and to the left. So that's a positive slope. It's pretty steep because this is vertical. This is zero. This is already way past middle and this is approaching vertical. So this is a pretty high positive slope. So we say this is a positive slope, which means what? We have a positive acceleration. So if you don't know anything else during your motion, you know that at this point in time, whatever it is, like two seconds or whatever, it means you have a positive acceleration, which means you're increasing speed during that point, which makes sense because you can see that as time goes on beyond this point, we continue to go up the curve, means we're increasing our velocity. So it's telling you that acceleration is happening. Positive acceleration means we're increasing our speed or increasing the, the magnitude of our velocity. All right, so let's look at point B. What do we have at point B? Point B, we have to draw a line or a, a line that is uh, tangent to this curve, which at the very tippy top, there's only one line that barely kisses it, and that's a horizontal line. What is the slope of that line? Horizontal slope means zero. Zero slope, no slope. If it's flat, there's no slope at all. So we have a zero slope, which means that we have a zero acceleration. Again, this makes sense because you can see on the other side of the hump, I'm coming, I'm slowing down. So if I'm speeding up, no, notice this is a velocity. This is not a position curve. This is a velocity curve. As I go in time, I'm increasing my speed, and then something happens, and then I start decreasing my speed. So if I'm increasing my speed, and then I'm decreasing my speed, then there must be a moment when I don't have any velocity at all. I mean, any, um, not any velocity at all. I don't have any acceleration at all. Because remember, I'm speeding up, and then I basically start speeding up in the other direction. So I must... I must have no change in speed at all at the very top at that moment when everything changes. So I have zero acceleration. My speed is no longer changing at the top. Notice I'm still going fast. I mean, this could be 50 meters per second. I'm still going really, really fa fast. But what's happened is I'm no longer increasing my speed anymore. And I start to decrease my speed on the other side. So visually, that would be something like I'm increasing my speed like this. That's what, you know, I start slow and I start increasing my speed, but then I'm going to go like this because I'm on the, on the other side of that hump. I'm going to start slowing down. So it's going to be like this, increasing, then decreasing. Let me do that one more time. Increasing to the maximum, then decreasing. So I reached a maximum speed, but then I stopped increasing my speed and I started slowing down. So I went faster and then slower. At that moment in the middle, I reverse the trend of my velocity. I have zero acceleration. So what happens at point C? Point C, you have to find simply a slope of the line tangent to point C. So you just kind of draw a line mentally, right? And kind of have it separated. It should be touching the curve there. But you can see it's a negative slope. Positive slope this way, negative slope this way. So what you have here is a negative whoops, slope, which means you have a negative acceleration. What does negative acceleration mean? It means I'm uh, no, I'm basically, I'm, I'm in accelerating in the negative x direction, if you want to think of it that way. You can think of this slowing down. So that's what's happening. I've reached a maximum speed, and now I'm slowing down, or you can think of it as accelerating negatively, which is the same thing as slowing down my speed there. And then you have part D, 
uh, which you want to find the slope of the line tangent to this curve, which will look something like that. Again, that's a negative slope. So this is a negative slope, um, which means a negative acceleration. All right. So it's kind of hard to see from a, from a graph like this when everything is kind of like there's no numbers. But if I asked you, A, B, C, or D, what seems to be the, the highest acceleration, absolute value, either positive or negative? What seems to be the largest overall? What you're looking at is the steepest tangent line, right? So this is not very steep. This is zero. So you can throw D and B out. This is pretty steep. This one to me does not look quite as steep. It's in the negative direction, but even still, it doesn't look quite as steep as this one. So I would say A is the absolute value of the steepest acceleration or the steepest slope, which means the most acceleration in the absolute value sense. Here's another bonus question. C and D are both having negative acceleration, or you think of it as deceleration, slowing down. But which one has the largest value of that negative acceleration? In other words, which part, C or D, are you slowing down the fastest? Right? So you look here, you have a very steep negative slope compared to this, a very shallow or a much more shallow negative slope. So which one do you think you're decelerating the most? Up here at C. Here the value of the acceleration is much higher in a negative sense. Here the value of the acceleration is lower in the negative sense. So for instance, I'm just going to totally make up some numbers. I haven't calculated. There's no numbers here. But for instance, this might be negative 16 meters per second squared up at C, and then down here at D, it might be negative 2.5 meters per second squared. Again, just making up numbers. They're both negative, which means they're both slowing down. You're both slowing down your velocity at both locations, but up here, when you come right off of the turn, you're slowing down much, much faster because your slope is higher than you are here, which you're, here you're almost approaching zero anyway. So you're kind of pulling into your driveway, slowing down uh, to a final stop. So that is the concept of instantaneous acceleration. The main pull away, right, the main pull away, to be honest with you, isn't even really this formula. This formula is cool and nice and it's a good theoretical thing, but really the most important thing is to remember the following. You have displacement. How does it change with respect to time? The slope of the line tangent to a displacement curve is what we call velocity. When you look at a velocity curve versus time, the slope of that guy, the slope of a line tangent to that guy at any point is what we call the acceleration. Meters, meters per second, meters per second squared. That's what I want you to remember because that is the physics. That's the intuitive thing you need to keep in your mind as we go and solve problems. So let's go solve a few quick problems as we move on into our equations of motion and learning how things move through the world with physics and velocity and acceleration.